Hello traders, welcome to today's video for December 11th, Monday right now at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So not a whole lot that happened from my last weekly video. If you haven't watched it, you are able to you know, go to my website, YouTube, you know, Facebook, Forex Street, whatever outsource uh, media platform you want to watch it, um, you know, feel free to do so. But from that video to this video, it's only about you know more than 12 hours apart. Nothing really happened, but let's take a look at how the market uh, closed today for Monday. Now, Monday is usually a very quiet day. And as we mentioned in the previous video, don't really have much going on today. And uh, if you want to know more about the economic calendar for this week, again, go to that video. I don't want to repeat uh, a lot of things. You can just go watch that video. So uh, important thing, take a look at uh, British Pound. Let's take a look at cable first. Now, look at what happened. As I mentioned, last week they reached the pre-exit deal, and this week expected they are going to maybe sign it or do something else, but it doesn't matter because the market had already dumped it. That means this is really a typical buy rumor. And in fact, this buy rumor has been a very long trend all the way since uh, November. Beginning of November, they're buying the rumor, buying the rumor all the way until December, then that's it, start dropping. Last week, you had a little bit of rally trying to top this previous high. It failed, and then that's why we dropped. Now, this is going to be an important area at, let me take a look at this low, 1.3320. Okay, let me draw one more line here. 1.3320. Okay, so what I do usually is I put 10 pips below, right, to avoid some uh, spreads. So 1.3310 will be an uh, important line to touch it basically in a price level because if they break it touch it means they actually broke uh, breaks the previous low okay that means this thing is really really going down now of course uh, that doesn't mean it's the weakness for british pound it might be a strength for us dollar although i don't think that's the case just because we do have the fomc coming up wednesday most likely when you have an fomc week um, not a whole lot of action ahead of that. You sometimes have a buy rumor sell fact effect, so we might have a little bit buying the you know, US dollar. But since the CME market already priced 98% or above for a rate hike, you know most big money if they don't want to buy US dollar, they will be in already. What about Euro pound? See Euro pound, you also have a rally, so that's a more accurate way. If you take a look at two British pound pair, uh, you can see that both are going in the same direction then most likely it's the same uh, sentiment. So right now, British Pound indeed have a little bit weak sentiment. And this, why does it come from? Really, it's coming from buying the rumor sale the fact. So is this going to continue? Actually, it depends on tomorrow because we're going to have a CPI data later on in the London session. And this will be a, a, a critical point because if you have something more than 3.1%, obviously it's going to inject another inflation uh, panic or a, a suspicion for BOE to raise interest rates. So that's going to be positive for British pound. On the contrary, if you have something lower than 3%, then British pound will drop again. And I'm personally, of course, leaning more toward the downside bias. The, the, the reason is because if you want to trade a, any piece of news, it's better to understand what is the existing sentiment and write that existing sentiment. So rather than use the news as a complete surprise to turn it around you could do that or you could just use it as a further trigger you know just a, like another fuel to fuel up the existing sentiment so since the existing sentiment right now is already in the bearish side if tomorrow the cpi data dropped below three percent that will add on more negative sentiment and we will expect to see british pound uh, trading into the lower side Okay, so that's one of my plan. But on the country, if we have something better than three point three percent, you know, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. If we have something better than three percent, I might not take the trade because I don't know whether the inflation sentiment will be stronger than this pre-exit buy rumor sell fact sentiment. I don't know if that sentiment can turn around the current negative sentiment. So for me, then that's a low probability trade. So I probably not really interesting to do that unless you have something really really negative like you have something like 2.5% right let's expand it right it's 3% 3% 2.9 so if you have 2.5 then that's significant enough because last time we have something below 2.5 or 2.5 was in April this year so if we have something 2.5 
then I would short it. Okay, for me, all it's all about uh, adding on this probability because every trade you want to take a look at the little information here and there. Doesn't matter if it's fundamental or it's technical, but just to add on a more reason uh, for your trade to become more a high probability trade. Now, obviously, for US dollar, uh, it's also not a very confirmed trade because FOMC is coming on Wednesday. That means whatever you do, and actually, you know what? This is already technically the third week of December. That means next week will be Christmas. So whatever you do, it's best to have a more shortened degree of time frame. The reason is because you don't want to hold trade in a large position into the holiday season. As I mentioned, holiday season, not only you have a thin liquidity market, you also have Christmas coming, which I expect to have a lot more, you know, geopolitical events, terrorist attacks, things like that. I don't hope for it. Of course, I don't hope for the world to be not peaceful. But unfortunately, that seems to be a pattern. So that's why I wouldn't want to basically get into any trade, uh, hoping to ride it into the new year, things like that. Of course, you could do that. But then you really need to have a very, very big reason and a very big stop loss to make sure you're fine. In fact, one of my trade dollar yen was exactly the, the, the way I'm doing it. You know, I put the trade in at eight hour chart, eight hour chart. Uh, I got in at here, which is really the recent swing low. And I'm really not planning to move anything unless we break above uh, 114.75. So even if we come down and touch me again, that's fine. Right, because I know my stop loss is way below 100, which is a very, very important support line. So for me, that's only that's the only way I might holding this trade all the way until 2018. Other than that, most of my trades either four hour and one hour, and I'm looking to wrap it up. Definitely, hopefully by the end of this week, or definitely uh, before the new year. So Palm Cable is one of my existing trade. I'm still in. I'm still actually believe it now. I'm still okay. I'm not in a drawdown right now. It just touched my break even point. So, um, you know what? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Okay. I think there are too uh, too much uncertainty right now for US dollar. So I'm actually going to and since I could, you know, a lot of trade if I'm already stuck in. I rather let it play out. I rather let it play out. That means I don't want to take the immediate loss unless I know it's a logic reason. Okay, if I know it's a logic reason, then you should just get out. Okay, so that's the hard thing about trading because you want to know whether you're making a decision by logic or you make a decision by emotions. Okay, so sometimes you have to be very, very honest and ask yourself. So I think right after I'm finishing this video, I think I'm interested to actually get out of British pound trade. And the reason is because there's CPI coming tomorrow, and most importantly, there's FOMC coming Wednesday. So I don't know whether FOMC is going to give US dollar a strong momentum or a weak momentum. So for me, this trade has lost a lot of uh, probability. It, it, it were originally I got in way you know weeks before was shorting at 50% because I think pre exit negotiation and uncertainty will create a lot of a lot of uncertainty to basically uh, give cable bearish sentiment. That was not the case. So now since I'm already here, I might just wrap it up for now. You know, if I could get out, I want to reduce my dollar exposure for short or long. Uh, Euro pound, I talked about this last week already. Dollar cat is another one that I got in right here before, uh, before all this thing happened, before this week. So again, not probably not a good trade. No, sorry, not a good probability trade if you are not in here. It's best to wait after FOMC. Now, the only reason I'm still in this trade is because I don't know if FOMC is going to be bullish or bearish event for US dollar. But most important thing is that I'm still bullish about Canadian dollar. If you take a look at oil market, look at Brent crude, right? There's two oil market you can take a look at. You can take US oil, which is the really uh, more reflective for the domestic oil production. 
uh, for for U.S. right? So WTI from from Texas. So that's why you have a little bit different chart if you take the U.S. oil or U.K. oil. So if you take a U.K. oil, it's a more international base. It's a more accurate reflecting for the micro economies. So it's obviously a very very uh, higher high. You know, we just actually broke this sixty four handle. So a, a pretty good picture. Now, what's the fundamental news? The fundamental news, of course, the OPEC passed meeting agreed to extend the oil curb all the way until 2018, probably at the end of 2018. Um, the last uh, economic figure from Canada, labor and GDP were also positive. So the only thing that's negative for Canada was Bank of Canada uh, event last week, which the market perceived it to be dovish. So this week we will have another uh, comment from Polas right at Let's take a look. I think somewhere here. Right. Paulus is going to speak uh, right here. Okay, they're gonna, he's going to speak on Thursday. So I don't know the exact detail, but this this will be a potential market shaker for Canadian dollar. So only that's the only piece that might weaken Canadian dollar further. Otherwise, I am still bullish about Canadian dollar at the moment. That doesn't mean this trade is looking well. The reason is because I took this trade in a more short term perspective. I was hoping this breakdown uh, previous week to continue the downtrend and I used a double top as a resistant point as my stop loss. Now obviously the US dollar rebound largely and this week if the FOMC turned out to be a hawkish event then this trade, this trade will be a loser. Okay. That does not mean I reflect my position for CAD. That just means Canadian. Uh, that just means U.S. dollar regain a momentum. Now, if that's the case, they are looking to buy U.S. dollar. Okay, so as you can see, I'm I'm going to exit my cable trade. I'm keeping my dollar yen because this is really a long-term perspective trade, not to worry about the short-term momentum. Uh, pound, pound not so much just because I don't want to get stuck in here. It's more volatile than dollar yen at the moment just because you have two equal force to drive these two currencies. You have a pre exit noises and you also have the FOMC for this week. So I'll wait maybe to jump in to short again after the FOMC if the FOMC is a hawkish event. Other than that, uh, dollar yen I talked about that already. Now Aussie cat was another trade I got in last week and obviously I'm a little bit drawdown right now but all in all, this is my stop loss. That's my loss. So really for me, whenever we are between 68 to 37 Fibonacci line, really nothing to worry about it, right? Even if we are 78, that's a deep retracement. Then I will I will actually be worried a little bit. But when we are within this range in any type of a trade, for me, this is all still fine. So I'm still in it. And of course, this is just a technical perspective. Uh, Fundamentally, I'm still, like I said, bullish about CAD. Aussie had the negative uh, data last week from GDP and trade balance. So this week, we will see employment data. So the employment data might push it to the upside or it might drop it. So we'll have to see. Now, expectation, of course, is higher, right? It's higher. So let's expand it. So last one was a miss. But it's as you know, expanding out. It's actually a, a very wide fluctuation. So I don't know what's gonna happen. So we'll have to see. And New Zealand was perhaps the biggest surprise today. Now New Zealand dollar had gained a lot of strength because RBNZ had announced the governor for next March, and apparently market just feel very positive about this new governor. I don't know the whole lot about the details. Or, or the biography of the governor. But for me, you know, the expectation is because right now the current government is a sitting governor, right? It's just doing this for the six months transitional period. So I think whatever it is, the point is that market love certainty. Okay, financial market hates uncertainty. So previously, because the New Zealand government currently is a liberal, it's a new government, it's very, very uncertain for the financial market. That's why you saw New Zealand dollar drop tremendously for weeks and months. RBNZ governor right now, they have announced a new guy who is going to be 
the governor for the next five years. Obviously, that's stability. People like it. That's that's a sure thing. So maybe that's why market react very very positively to the New Zealand dollar. Now let's not forget about the high interest rate of New Zealand dollar. It's still at the highest bank rate among all G7 currency. So it's always New Zealand dollar always have this underlying buying desire for a lot of carry traders. So that's something you always have to take into consideration. So I am still in the New Zealand short. Obviously, I wasn't expect this news. Okay, and that's the thing about trading is you cannot expect everything. That's why it's important to have a stop loss, and that's why always you always have to ask yourself if you are fine to lose, right? Because that's that's the fundamental. Never ever get into a trade with the mentality that that's going to be a sure thing. You're definitely going to make money because that's a sure thing. You are going to lose money. In the long run, okay. So for me,、uh, I don't know what's gonna happen, but this piece of news is definitely a surprise. I don't know how that sentiment is going to play out. I'm just gonna be honest with you. So I'm holding this trade again because I'm still bullish about CAD.、Uh, I will see what happens. I think for New Zealand dollar, that is really the only catalyst that turned my turn the currency around. There's now no other things that is strong enough. So. I have to see now. Of course, if we have a future news today, tomorrow, this week coming out from New Zealand, that is more and more positive for the currency. Then maybe, maybe it's time to get out for, to do early exit. Otherwise, New Zealand was another trade I'm still in. Obviously, another huge、uh, rebound today. So these are all comes into surprise for me personally. The New Zealand trade I got in because I want to buy Japanese yen. So I got in for the reason, the opposite reason actually. I'm long dollar yen because I think in the long term, dollar is going to be very strong. Then Japanese yen. I'm short New Zealand yen maybe in a shorter time frame or in the shorter、uh, perspective because I think December we might have more geopolitical events that's going to shake the financial market, which going to benefit for a safe haven currency. So that's why I got into it. So we'll see what happened. But basically, that's all my current trade. What I'm looking to trade in the next session or day, CPI looking to sell British pound for something that's three or actually we need something below three. So for something that's below three percent, if we have something better than three, I wouldn't really、uh, buy it. I have to really I want to see something that's very positive. Okay, really positive. Actually, you know what? Even even if we have something more than three, I probably won't buy.、It. I just again, I don't know how strong that sentiment. Let me take a look at the maximum number. Just give me one second. I'm opening my router's chart right now. CPI month to month, so three percent is year to year. Okay, so if we have something more than three point two, all right, that's the maximum deviation. Three point two or above, I might jump in and buy British pound. If we have something 2.8 or below, I will short British pound. All right, guys, that's the number 3.2 or above, 2.8 or or below. Okay, that's only that's number I will I will get into this trade. Otherwise, I like to wait for the market, the price action to settle down, and then I'll see if I want to short British pound again. If we have something more below three, okay. So that's it for tomorrow. PPI obviously it's important, but because FOMC, it's not gonna be a lot of shaker. Draghi is going to speak. Going to speak. I also don't think it's going to be too important because he's going to speak again on Thursday. So not a big event. And RBA Governor Low is going to speak. I also don't expect too much because they have RBA have been very、um, wait and see mode, right? Just like Bank of Canada. Now he might be more cautious just because last week you have a little bit negative. You have a negative data last week, a negative expectations. Okay, so he might even give some dovish comment. But I'm not going to trade on that just because I don't know. It's a low probability trade for me. Okay, so that's my plan for tomorrow, and that's my current trade. Once sorry, not Aussie on again. New Zealand, I'm short. New Zealand, I'm I'm short. Aussie can, I'm short. So as you can see, I'm actually in a lot of cap position. Okay, normally I wouldn't do that unless there's a new idea. But to be honest, I probably shouldn't do that. All right, this is my own learning. Like I think. 
I sometimes get too excited and overexpose myself. So you see, I have about three positions in hand. So not a good practice. Definitely not a good practice. Also, they all enter at a different time frame with different event. Still, definitely a habit that you should stay away because it's very easy to get into a habit of over trade, over expose. Then eventually, that's where you lose big money. Dollar yen, I'm still long. Uh, cable, I am still short, and that's about it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any question, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.